Hello and welcome to another edition of Discover Mercer County Business. I'm your host, Rod Wilt, and I'm the Executive Director of Penn Northwest Development Corporation. We are Mercer County, Pennsylvania's Certified Economic Development Organization. Our motto is Make It in Mercer County, and our role is to create low-cost financing solutions for recruiting, retaining, and growing jobs and business opportunities in every corner of our county. The sole purpose of this program is to showcase people and organizations that are making it happen here. We interview them to find out why they have chosen Mercer County, Pennsylvania as a great place to live, work, and play. We're producing this show in conjunction with the Teal College students, faculty, and staff, and we're coming to you from the state-of-the-art TV and radio studios in the James Pettus Communications Center on Teal's campus in Greenville. If you would like to connect with our improvement movement team to see how you can make it in Mercer County, please visit our website at penn-northwest.com or give us a call at 724-662-3705. You can also find us on YouTube by searching Penn Northwest Development Corp or connect with us on LinkedIn and other social media platforms. We hope, <clears throat> excuse me, we hope you enjoy this edition of Discover Mercer County Business, and we are joined today by the folks from Powered Air, Bill Arbanis and Ken Lipinski. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us, and we really appreciate your time today and sharing the, the Powered Air story. And uh, my understanding is it, it was an idea that came, uh, you two gentlemen had worked together before in the past, so pick it up from there, Bill or Ken. That's correct. Um, in 1997, we started the company. There was actually three of us. We worked for a competitor at the time. And uh, the one gentleman, Ken Blayshack, was had some strengths in engineering and R&D type things. Ken was in sales and marketing for a long time. And my strength was like production and administrative things, office type things. So the three of us got together and uh, thought we could uh, Make something a little better. Yeah, that's what we did. So the you, you were working on a at a competitor, same product line, but as you watched the production and looked at the final product, wheels started turning in your head, like, hey, we can do this a little bit better. That and a lot of our customers were asking for different things, different designs, uh, things that were kind of risky at that time to do, and uh, we decided that uh, yeah, we can do that. And, Make what the market was uh, wanting at the time. And Ken, what were what were some of those? Well, first of all, before we get into that, where do people find your products? Let's just start at zero and work our way forward. So basically, any open door you can you can find one of our air curtains. But we've done projects in like uh, deep mining industry, uh, NASA, overseas. We do a lot with the uh, big box stores, uh, government work. Uh, did a lot during Desert Storm. Uh, a lot of the munition dumps where they were using the air curtains to keep the sand out of uh, mm. out of the munitions, and it's just like any open door. There's a uh, application for air curtain. We've blown for Heinz. We've blown mm. water off the drawers while they're affixing uh, labels to it, so the label wouldn't slide down from the wetness and the glue. And you know, there's a lot of it, a lot of interesting projects. We've so an air curtain is really just a forced air creating a barrier between inside and outside or one room to the next? Is that the best way yeah, to Yes, so it basically it? uses the ambient air on the inside and projects an airstream to the outside, stopping the infiltration of a cold or warm air from coming into the building. So if you're walking into a store and you feel that thing hit you in either the face or the back, that's it's your product. Just, yeah, you messes up your hair, your hair when you yell that. <laughs> <laughs> or it could, it could be used for uh, insect control also in a lot of applications. Like uh, when they bring produce through a back door of a restaurant or whatever, they're opening that door. So we have a higher velocity of air for those units that can stop the flies from coming in. So, so there's there's a lot of different uses. But you can actually keep temperature. What what would be the temperature the variance? Two, we got it, it's eighty five percent efficient. But when we've done studies at an actual door, like if the temperature is ambient on the inside, sixty five outside, it could be freezing we'll lose two degrees of the ambient air temperature. That's it. Yep. And, and that, you can stand on the threshold, put your hand outside and feel the cold air, bring it back in and it's got a total seal. And that technology has been around a long time, but you've just continued to perfect it and create new applications for it? I think it's 1950s it was uh, Yeah, started. in the 50s it was brought in from the, uh, the Swedish people brought it in. Wow, fantastic. So when you were uh, at your 
former place of employment, you thought there were some applications you could do better. What were some of those seeds of thought that you brought forward and created the, the company around? Well, one thing was uh, stainless steel. We went with high quality was, was what we were targeting. So the box so, itself. Yeah, instead of like a painted carbon steel that will, will rust or plastic. One of our competitors in California uses a lot of plastic. We figured we could go in the market with something uh, a little higher quality and try to compete on price. So it seemed to work. Air, air curtains were catching on at the time uh, when I first started. You know, everybody was like, what is an air curtain? That was how my first, how my call started. What is an air <laughs> curtain? And you know, after that, and it started to become recognized, started uh, being highly used. And that was starting to be aesthetics was the reason, was one of the big seeds. People opening up the uh, new, like uh, fresh and easy, those kinds of, they wanted something that blended in with their aesthetics instead of a rectangular box painted industrial gray or something and just wanted better looking stuff. I, I, I Quieter just, too. I don't know much about it, but it just seems like I, I see a lot of your products where you have those sliding doors a lot of times. Is that one of the primary applications where you have like a sliding door into like a Lowe's or Home Depot grocery store or whatever? And you have some around Teal's campus here too, yes, right? We do. We do. Yeah. Yes, we do. I think there's some uh, steam or hot water units. Yeah, you have here. hot water heated units here. We, we do uh, ambient electrical electric heated steam hot water or gas heated we also so whatever's available you can make that yeah, work yeah yes when i was uh touring the plant a few weeks ago you said that you actually came out with a smaller unit for like drive-through windows and things like that is that right yeah it's a little air curtain it's made for a 24 inch pass through uh window you don't want to have the you know the air velocity is way toned down because People are handing money across. You don't want it to want it blowing all over go into the, the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that. That would happen to me, man. That would be my, that would be my thing. Yeah, that's and, pretty neat. And it keeps the girls and the guys that are working at the uh, window space warm and comfortable because it is kind of miserable. And you get car fumes coming in that stops the car fumes. And does a lot of good for a little little unit. So, are there some customers in that space you can talk about where you've made an inroad into? into some of those. Go ahead. <laughs> you all right with that? Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, we have some, <coughs> some chain accounts. We have uh, McDonald's, that's, that's a big one. Uh, I would say that's a pretty big yeah, one. We have a national <laughs> account, Chick-fil-A. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, those are two of the bigger uh, drive-through window type places. So when you, what amazes me and what this program's all about really is, you know, the quiet company, Greenville Reynolds Development is where you're located. Talk about how far-reaching the, the company and products have become over the um, 20 years you've been in business. I think we've sold to practically every country in the world, major countries. Um, we are actually started a, uh, a licensing agreement in Saudi Arabia. Uh, we, do, we just actually got off a big job last year with the King of Fahad Airport in Saudi, which was a very, uh, put us on the map in Saudi. I've had some friends fly in and out of there. They were working as expats there in the healthcare at the oh, okay. King Fahad Hospital on the compound. And yes, so they flown in and out of that airport. <laughs> and, and one of them was uh, one of the Lang brothers that you oh, went to Brad or Barry. with Brad. Yeah, Brad worked over there for about two or three years, actually. Wow. You were close to a classmate of his, I think. Yeah, right? he was your, your older than me. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> so almost every country, that means every continent, right? And uh, all across the country with some of your national accounts. So where where do you go from here? Where's the growth opportunities um, for the company, do you think, looking forward? Do you, uh, I, I guess a lot of the growth is, is now starting to be these uh, curbside delivery doors are very popular now. So it's something that we're trying to gear towards and come up with the ideal solution that they need for these doorways. Uh, a couple of the restaurants that Bill had mentioned. They uh, actually create traffic jams, so they're trying to put in more doors where, yes, the drive-in window will work, but they need doors that the other girls and guys can go out and take the orders 10, 11 cars deeper now to speed up that process. So it's so, a low, and does the unit, I would imagine, pays for itself in energy efficiency and, and creature if, comfort? If your door's open for about one hour a day, Five days a week, you'll pay the air curtain off in uh, 15, 16 months. Yeah, if you go on our website, there's a uh, energy calculation study that will tell you the uh, payback period. We did come out with a, a COVID-type unit too. To oh, talk about that, that because that it's it's you know 
I new. have written down here, tell me the yeah. impact of COVID on your business. Well, so. Of course, it's new. Um, it hasn't taken off a lot yet, but we're making some inroads. Um, it uses UV, UV bulbs. You know, the air, the air comes in, goes over the bulb, so it's cleaned, and it comes back out. And uh, supposed to be 99% effective. 99% effective killing, killing the virus. It SARS, MRSA, also will uh, kill too. It, it, what it's doing, it's cleaning the air. So if you have, you know, technically COVID, they say if you uh, come in and you sneeze, obviously it's not gonna capture that right away, but you've diluted the air with so much fresh air, it's a lot uh, harder to spread the germs through a clean air than it is condensed air. So you have so that technology. That on order, a customer can order that now, or is yes. it still yeah. in production? Oh, yes. Yeah, we have a few uh, out in the field already. Uh, Pfizer, actually, is, uh, we were waiting for uh, them to show it on TV when uh, Joe Biden was through the Pfizer plant. We thought we'd get a glimpse, but they didn't go through that. I <laughs> didn't go through that part. Oh, fantastic! Was there other other areas of your business that might have been impacted by by COVID at all, or did you see it as a net positive or a, a negative? Were you essential business at the time? We were, yes. we were considered essential. Um, we didn't have to uh, get rid of any employees. We held everybody. About 50% of our workforce worked from home during most of the okay. time, but uh, the plant, we kept working there and uh, we saw a little drop in, in sales, but uh, this first quarter looks really good. So. We're hoping it continues, but it's ramping up fast. Well, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Why, why Mercer County? Bill, I know you're, you're from Mercer County, but you know, what's attractive to Mercer County for, for you as business owners? Obviously, uh, you've got a, a worldwide product. You could probably be recruited by other economic development specialists around the country to locate somewhere else, but yeah. why here? Well, when we started the company, we looked around a little bit in the, I'd say maybe three county yes. area. And uh, at the time, uh, if you remember Dick Dykes at the Greenville oh, Development, sure. yeah. he, he was a neighbor of my parents and I talked to him and he set us up with a nice, very small <laughs> rental space. Like an incubator space. Pretty you could, small. You I mean, try, <laughs> try some prototypes. Maybe 5,000 like square feet. Uh, I think it barely touched it. <laughs> <Something like that. laughs> yeah, in, in, on 4th Street and uh, that got us going. Then we started renting more and more space in the same building. And I think in 2004, we uh, built our first uh, building of our own. Okay. Sure. And before we take our, our break here, was there one product that became the, the catalyst, the thing that like caught on and put Powered Air on the map when you were coming out of that incubator space? Was there? First big order. Did you talk about that? Yeah, I think the uh, Toronto airport really put us on the map. Um, we had gotten that job and kind of made, when you do an airport, that kind of makes you the king because a lot of engineers, architects, everybody has their eyes on the, uh, on the airport and they seen power to get this job. So we really exploded our market in the Canadian market, which then trickled down into the States. Uh, but yeah, our first big hit was in Canada. Really? Not yeah. in the U.S.? No, it wasn't. That's fascinating. And uh, Mercer County from being from uh, Allegheny County, Mercer County had a lot of, uh, buildings for rent. Uh, we, we could actually grow in our little 4,500 square foot or 5,000. Right across the street, we could get another 10, 20,000 at the time. So it was really convenient. Pricing was you know, extremely extre great. It was fantastic. It, uh, it actually saved the deal, to be real honest with you. That was oh, one of the biggest things was trying to find where we could manufacture X amount of money for square foot. Because when the dollar came up, I was basically walking out the door and Bill said, wait a minute, <laughs> <laughs> we can get buildings for that. And you know, here, that's one of the reasons. And the availability is still phenomenal. That's great. Well, we have one of our taglines, uh, you know, we're, we're a low cost provider of funds and real estate for business retention and uh, recruitment and expansion. So I'm glad that- uh, It's a true, you, it's a fact, it's very true. You were part of that incubation. So we're gonna take a quick break. We're here with Bill Arbanis and Ken Lipinski from Powered Air. And we'll be right back after this short message. Looking to expand and grow? Then Mercer County, Pennsylvania is the right place for you. Whether your company is involved in manufacturing, technology, logistics, health, or business services, shale gas exploration, or retail, we can help. Mercer County, Pennsylvania offers low-cost land, 
valuable infrastructure, a quality labor force, and the right financial tools to make your corporate expansion an affordable reality. Mercer County is only a day's drive to major markets including Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Buffalo, New York City, Chicago, and even Southern Canada. Companies like GE Transportation, Joy Cone Company choose to make it in Mercer County, and Penn Northwest wants to show you how your company can also make it in Mercer County too. Our team of experts will help you expand and save dollars. How does Penn Northwest do it? How does Penn Northwest save companies so much money? With a combination of low interest loans, grants and credits, tax abatements and even tax free property. Here's the best part. Penn Northwest will do most of the work for you. Just click on the button below and get the process started. Or you can first get an idea of how your organization can make it in Mercer County by using the savings estimator located at makeitinmercercounty.com. You'll see that expanding your business in Mercer County, Pennsylvania is the move that makes the most dollars and cents. Call Penn Northwest Development Corporation at 724-662-3705 for more information. We are back on Discover Mercer County Business and we're thrilled to have Bill Arbanis and Ken Lipinski from Powered Air with us and they make their home right in the Greenville Reynolds development. We've been talking about uh, the genesis of the business and the, the growth and we talked a little bit about the impact COVID has had, but I want to uh, turn now to your employees. How many people do you now have working with you at Powered Air and what are some of the skill sets that someone might need to come to work for you guys uh, when there's openings? Well, we're, I think we're at about 45 employees, getting close to 50. Um, there's a multitude of skills. I mean, we have electrical wiring, um, assembly work, uh, welding, we have a box shop where we make our own crates. Uh, we have a CNC punch, so that's kind of a skilled position, and uh, some brake presses. So a little bit of everything. Um, but uh, we, we draw from the local area. I mean, we have a lot of Reynolds and Greenville graduates. And uh, in the office, we have engineers, marketing, accounting, every, you know, everything in a normal business. Yeah, that's great. Do you find that... Um the region uh, is producing enough skilled labor for you? To, uh, are there areas where we need to maybe focus a little bit more on and Im improve? Uh, something that we're really focused on at Penn Northwest is making sure that we've got economic opportunities for everyone coming out of school, whether they're coming out with a graduate degree from an MBA program or whether they're coming out of their career center or everywhere in between. But have you found it a challenge to find? Uh, some, yeah, somewhat in the, in the plant we have. Uh... Electrical wiring uh, is a big one. It, someone with a little bit of an electrical background, sometimes it's hard to find people. We, we have some people through word of mouth. Um, we've dealt with uh, the Votech School. We've dealt with uh, Newcastle School of Trades. You know, we've been lucky, but uh, sometimes it's difficult. Yeah, that, it's a challenge. Yeah. And then, Ken, on the, on the sales side, how, how do you function on the sales side? Is it all internal, or are there reps that... Uh, we have manufacturers reps across the United States, Canada, Mexico. Um, we don't work with reps per se overseas, but you know we have uh, outlets that we sell to. So the overseas business, they are dealing direct with you here in Greenville? Yes. Yeah. Um, they're, the rules are a little bit different. They change. You know, sometimes if you sign a rep up in some countries, he's yours till for whenever <laughs> yeah, until yeah, he kills over huh? yeah you just sometimes uh, okay you get locked in so we stay away from that um we got all our uh sales managers are all from from the area mercer county okay and uh yeah this worked out really well so the export business or do you work with the uh with the export folks up in venango county how do you handle how do you handle that or is that on the is that their their issue if you're shipping overseas? If we're shipping overseas, it's usually their issue. We'll either take it to the closest port, being Miami or somewhere out in uh, Washington, the Puget Sound or that. And, and you're trucking, usually, you're just flatbed we'll trucking. We'll pay it to the, in the continental United States and then they move it from where it has to go. The only okay. thing we do is like export crating or whatever. You know, it's you required. have to have heat treated crates or whatever is required. We'll do all that, but once it hits the port, they typically take over. 
Gotcha. And what part of your business would you say is domestic versus overseas as a percentage? You're counting Canada is. Yeah. I would say 60, 40, 60 US, 40%. Really that, see that just amazes me out of <laughs> that beautiful plant you have in, in Reynolds, seriously, that you're touching all these places around the world. And uh, it's just fantastic. You know, there. It's funny because that's where I go, where is Greenville, PA? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, you know, no, it's not, you know, it's not South Carolina or North Carolina, it's Pennsylvania. Oh, Every it's, state has a Greenville. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and then when you say uh, we're within, what, eight hours of uh, over two-thirds of the nation's population by travel because of 79 and 80, it's uh, yeah. a really very, very centrally located. You know, when you look to the, we talked a little bit about where some of the future growth is, but if is, does it make sense to have a plant somewhere else at some point in time to, to meet demand, or do you still have expansion capabilities here in, in Greenville? We, we own a lot of acres around us. We can expand more. Uh, we did look at one time at warehousing out uh, in the West Vegas area or California, but uh, when we did the numbers, it, it just works this way. Yeah. It works I mean, well. It, we, we hear that a lot with a lot of our guests we have on the program and just in the everyday of the office that it's just an affordable place to do business here in Mercer County. And I think that's the message that we're trying to get out, you know, to anyone that'll listen to us, that it's a great opportunity to start or, or plan a, a business here. We've got a workforce. We have relatively low cost of land. Property taxes aren't horrible. You, access to utilities. I mean, I think that's kind of something that people are going to really have to deal with in the not too distant future right. is just access to power and, you, you haven't run into any of those infrastructure issues at all, I would imagine. None. We've been, we've, everyone's worked with us and haven't had an issue. Yeah. Well, that's great. That's the only great. advantage of having a plant I got in the West where Bill said was, if we found out after studying, was you're going to save a little bit on freight and you're going to pick up on delivery time. That's about the only real issues that we have. Costs more money to send it once you get past Texas. It costs more, and you're usually getting to a four or five day lane to get it out to California, and some people want it yesterday. <laughs> yeah. And you have the ability to to do that from here um, we, with the, we, with your carriers. Yes, you can pay expedited charges and get it there the next day. You just have to work it out with your customer on the fees. So yeah, I got gotcha. you. Got gotcha. you. Well, guys, we really appreciate you coming and spending time with us. And uh, this program really is all about showcasing companies like yours that kind of sprang up from an idea as you work together and said, hey, we can do this uh, better and, you know, create more products faster. And the fact that you're touching the world from Little Greenville, Pennsylvania is just fantastic. We really congratulate you on that and wish you all the best for future growth. Thanks well, for being with us. Thanks for having us. Thank you for uh, having us. We I appreciate it. Loved it. I really appreciate it. And thank you for watching this edition of Discover Mercer County Business. I want to thank our guests again, Ken and Bill from Powered Air for making it in Mercer County. Uh, we produced this show in the state of the art TV and radio studios in the James Pettus Communications Center on Teal College's campus in Greenville, PA. And we want to thank the students, faculty, and staff who have helped bring this show to life. If you have an idea or a suggestion for a future edition of Discover Mercer County Business, please connect with our improvement movement team on our website at pen-northwest.com or call us at 724-662-3705. And remember, you can also find out more about Penn Northwest Development Corporation by searching for us on YouTube or connecting with us on LinkedIn and other social media platforms. We hope you enjoyed this edition of Discover Mercer County Business, and we'll see you again next time.